Hello everyone, welcome to Salar Khan YouTube channel where today we start the course formally. Lecture number one and today we start off with what with the types of electric power plants, right? Yes, sir. So for, but first before that if we talk about the generation of electricity uh, Electrical power. So what is basically the generation? The generation of electrical power is what it is the conversion of What the conversion of energy available in different forms to electrical energy? The conversion, the conversion of energy available in different forms in nature to electrical energy is called what? It's called the is called the generation of electrical energy now for this uh, the, what are these different forms in nature so those are the the solar form it may be in the form of wind it may be in the form of water yes so we have a number of sources of energy so you convert that energy into the electrical energy this we call as the electrical power generation of or, or electrical energy generation today the main topic that we have is the types of electric power plants the topic of today is types of electric power plants so we would, we would study a number of electric power plants over here just an an overview to get to the road map we will not go in the detail construction of any we will not talk about them in a detail right so if we talk about mainly so they could be categorized into two the, the one would be the conventional ones and the other would be the non-conventional ones and you know what I mean by these and 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 we'll study a number of them and then by the end you would you can say which one of them is a conventional one and non-conventional so conventional the large huge dams etc the non-conventional the renewable non-conventional right the solar etc so let's get on to them one by one so Electrical energy is obtained as the secondary energy from the conversion of other sources. Yes, yes, sir. So the first, if I say, is a hydroelectric power plant. Number one is a hydroelectric power plant. So what do you have over here? What can you say about this? How is electrical energy generated in a hydroelectric power plant? So this is generated from, from water. Water is the primary source. And this is uh, the energy contained in flowing water is used to spin a turbine. And the turbine is coupled to a generator. Yes, yes. So this could be of uh, two parts, you know, I told you, uh, you can either have it uh, in the form of storage. Storage is what you would have dams, right? You would be utilizing. So in this case, you would be utilizing the potential energy of the water, which will be present at a certain height and you let it fall from that height. So the potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy and then the, the generator and the alternator, the, the turbine is coupled. And the rest is, you know, whatever it is. And in the second form, you could do what? You can take uh, the runoff river plants, which means that you would not have storage. A lake is flowing, a water is flowing, and you install a turbine over there. And, and as the water is flowing, you have, the, you have the electricity production. If you don't have water flow, you don't have any electricity production. But over here, you have a mass storage, right? So you would have uniform electricity production. The runoff rivers would utilize the kinetic energy of the of the flowing water, right? Yes, sir. Now the 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 greatest dam, the largest dam is what? It's the Three Gorges Dam in China. This is the largest dam in the world. Okay, the Three Gorges Dam, where 
in China. This is the largest dam built till now. Fine? Yes, sir. Do we have something to study from the book also? So, water. Water is stored. Potential energy, mechanical energy, alternator. Now, this is very popular. Why? Because of its low production and maintenance costs. So, I will write it in the end when I am comparing it. Right? Yes. The second is the thermal power plant. The second is what? It's the thermal power plant. In the thermal, what do you have? The water is converted into steam first. So basically, you are converting it in some sort of a heat, right? The, the same water is being used. It's water over there, but over there, the water is directly being used. Over here, the water is converted to steam first. The water is converted to steam and the steam is used to run a turbine. Whereas the superheated steam, uh, uh, the, the exhaust steam after driving the turbine, the exhaust steam from the low pressure turbine is passed to a condenser where it is condensed so that it can be reused in the boiler again. Right? Yes. Now, the thermal power plants have got a very high efficiency. They are outstanding because of their high efficiencies. Their efficiency is very high and similarly the capacity of long service life. They have a longer service life, very long service life. But, but what is the, uh, the disadvantage associated with this? It is that it has what? It has got a large it is time consuming for startup much time consuming for startup time consuming for startup which means that while starting it it it, it takes a certain time which is a little greater so that is why it has to be usually run continuously and they are operated as base load plants now base load plants are what so we will see them as well but these are the plants that would be used to serve the base load that is the base load is what that is present nearly throughout the entire period which you are considering the next you have is, you have is a gas turbine power plant the next you have is a gas turbine so what do the book say about this gas turbine power plant pp for the power plant let's say so it works as a jet engine so air is drawn and compressed in the compressor and subsequently heated in the combustion chamber air is drawn and compressed then it's heated then the fuel mixture is sprayed the fuel is sprayed it forms a mixture and and the rest you know whatever it is the thing is that this takes a less time for startup this has a less startup time and this basically is less startup time and so this is operated as a peak load plant. Now peak load plant means what? When the load is maximum. The load goes maximum, load goes to the peak. So you need to have additional capacity and that additional capacity would be provided by this gas turbine. Why? Because this is a less startup type. You can turn it on within a less time. For instance, let's say you can turn it on immediately. The load demand has increased. You, turn it, you need to turn out a plant quickly. The gas turbine is here for you right yes sir they are sometimes operated in conventional thermal power plants in a combined cycle so these two are uh, 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 mostly then combined together and the phenomenon is uh, explained over here so they have more efficiency and the operating cost reduces whatever it is let it go number fourth would be a diesel power plant so diesel power plant says what this are used as conventional diesel engine you have a diesel engine coupled to a generator right yes diesel power plants are of small size mainly they are of small size and i would say that they are mainly less than five megawatts capacity so they are of a smaller size they can be easily moved they can be easily moved and quick installation uh, I would say movable and it has what it has a quick installation and startup time quick installation therefore it is suitable for peak loads or reserve so again you could you could say that this would be for the peak loads 
or you could say that this could be as a reserve why because you can move it quickly you can turn it on quickly so that is the reason similarly you can have solar power plants number five solar power plants I believe this would be visible if I am writing over here. Uh, what do you say? Yes, it is. So, solar power plant says what? That they are derived from the energy of the sun. Energy of the sun. But the energy of the sun is not available all the time. You could have cloudy season. You could have rainy season. In the summer, the days are long. You have a lot of solar energy. In the winter, the days are short. You don't have sun for that interval of time. Yes, so these are the problems. The other thing is that this sunlight is highly scattered this is highly scattered so you need to, the process to produce electricity due from the sun is proved to be what to be expensive this is expensive photovoltaic conversion and this and that so just let it be so what does it say that this is basically expensive okay from the sun is expensive and also the efficiency is lower the efficiency of a hydro uh, one is very great it, it won't, hydro and thermal might reach about 80 percent i believe 80 to 85 percent however the solar systems that are being installed nowadays in our pakistan there is a trend of uh, of the solar systems uh, uh, in this uh, today's era but the efficiency is very low i believe this would be a 20 percent efficient yes yes so the solar is expensive solar is an expensive source of energy as well as the efficiency is quite low for this right yes the next is the wind power plant the sixth would be the wind power plant so what does the wind power plant say is derived from the conversion of energy contained in the wind into the electricity is similar to a windmill right is an expensive source again and total of the one percent of the world energy might be produced from here again it's expensive and less than one percent of the total world energy is produced from this thing wind the next should be biomass power plant the seventh is a biomass power plant biomass power plant says what the biomass such as wood solid waste garbage wood municipal waste garbage what others agriculture waste etc etc agricultural waste such as corn cobs and wheat straw wheat straw are some important some other sources for producing electricity these sources replace what replace the fossil fuels in the furnace so in that in the normal conventional thermal plants or, or what do we talk about so the fuel is being burned over here uh, in place of that fuel you would have these biomass objects wood municipal waste agricultural waste etc right yes this is an essential source in the rural areas mostly in the rural areas mostly and one thing that it could do is it could replace uh, uh, sorry it could uh, act towards the uh, uh, the what do i say it could reduce the pollution it could reduce the pollution why because the, the the wastes these are the waste material that we are utilizing so it could uh, have a positive effect by by reducing the pollution now one thing i missed is the nuclear power plant the one thing that i missed was the nuclear power plant so let's say i write it over here the eighth eighth is what it's the nuclear power plant so what does a nuclear power plant say over here a reactor contains a core of nuclear fuel primary it is enriched uranium so this is you have a reactor over here and in that you have a fuel which is mostly uranium so uranium is present and what you do is neutrons from a source are bombarded uh, uh, bombarded 
in the reactor the neutrons from a source bombard atoms of uranium so which means you have electrons you bombard the atoms of uranium so what it ha what happens is releasing heat and further neutrons so and these further neutrons will bombard further other uh, uh, uranium atoms and similarly a chain reaction would go on and this chain reaction can be controlled and uh, and from this you have a, a, a number of neutrons a high number of neutrons and an immense amount of heat is generated so this uh, heat is used to turn water into superheated steam and then what happens this turns a spin a turbine that generates electricity right yes so basically you have a chain reaction involved over here a chain reaction due to what due to neutron bombardment due to neutron bombardment so an immense amount of heat is produced but this uh, uh, this is uh, you know uh, not mainly used why because of its health hazards health hazards and also the this is a political discussion nuclear is main majorly a, a political side so you, you mostly have political problems involved right yes so i believe uh, that is an enough introduction for this video if i talk about this uh, from the book so the sun about the sun what do they say the sun is a primary source of energy but it is raised steam and this and that uneconomical and this the wind windmill the maintenance and gen, uh, generation costs are very small water has very popular because it has very low production and maintenance costs right yes if you're using nuclear this would this would be quite efficient it could be quite efficient as it is estimated that the heat produced heat produced by one kilogram of uranium of nuclear fuel of or let me say uranium of any of a nuclear fuel is equal to that produced by forty five thousand tons forty five hundred tons forty five hundred tons of coal so the heat that is being produced by forty five hundred tons of coal is equal to what one kilogram of uranium have a look right yes but again this would be expensive a very high cost of the nuclear plant and then you have what you have a problem of the radioactive waste right problem with the radioactive waste health hazard is an important issue with this one if i compare these three if i compare the major ones the major ones let's say i give the subheading as comparison of energy sources comparison of energy sources and i am talking about water fuel and nuclear so w for water f for fuel n for nuclear and i would write it in terms of what the first thing is the initial cost initial cost would include the capital cost of installation and interest and depreciation factors etc next would be the running cost this would be the maintenance charges the fuel charges the salaries etc the third would be reserves do you have them or not the next would be cleanliness simplicity and reliability simplicity and reliability now they have not uh, included uh, the whole in this discussion they have only included the major three because these three are the major used water of course the highest and fuel for the thermal and then you have what nuclear 
the last one so in in terms of the initial cost the nuclear has the highest cost nuclear has the highest cost then you have for the water and then you have for the fuel operated right yes similarly the running cost is for the fuels is the greatest for the fuels is the greatest and then that is for 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 uh, for water and then for the nuclear the running cost is the least right yes the reserves for water are permanent for water are permanent for fuels they are exhaustible yes whereas for nuclear they are inexhaustible isn't it like this it is in terms of cleanliness in terms of cleanliness water is the cleanest followed by uh, nuclear i believe yes followed by nuclear and that operated by fuels is the dirtiest in case of simplicity water is the simplest then followed by fuels and then the nuclear is the most complex in, in terms of reliability water power is most reliable followed by nuclear followed by fuel is the least reliable yes yes sir so i believe i finished this video over here maybe i have made it a little boring but i don't like these theoretical things now this was what i i, I don't think i needed to have a video on this but let's say we, we want to get on the road map. So I finish this one over here. See you in the next one uh, uh, with what? With maybe the, 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 the basic definition. So let's get into the engineering perspective of it. Right? Yes. So till then take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Goodbye.